part two. Remember the video series when I tried to give history for the dates between Malachi and Matthew? You remember when I gave the challenge to each and every black Hebrew Israelite to show me in the book of Maccabees, for that's the book that they always professing, one, a prophet of my God, any prophet. Two, anyone inquiring my God's advice. And three, show me the heavenly order to rededicate the temple. In fact, we read they didn't even know what to do with the old altar. So they just put it to the side until they could find a prophet, something that never happened, and just made another one. No crap. Saying that, Please turn to Acts chapter 7, verse 44 through 54 in the KJV. Perceptional context. As you know, this is the story of Stephen's stoning. No, not marijuana cigarettes, but real stones. What makes this story important to my theory, you ponder? Because of the real reason Stephen was killed. And no, it was not for the belief of the anointed one. Bottom line, and the real context of the passage is that he was killed because he outed the temple as a fraud. How did he do this, you wonder? By setting them up with a very good history lesson revolving around the building of the three temples, Moses' tabernacle included. Mind you now, during his history breakdown of our ancestors' ancestors, everything was cool with his future killers. No cuss, no fuss. But when he got to the history of the second temple, guess what he did? Who said that? Who said Uncle Isaiah? Right. When he got to the second temple history part, he well, let's read it for context's sake. Verse 44, quote, Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Joshua into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before my God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Stop! Okay, and as you can tell, the context of this dissertation is the history of the temples. And as you can also proceed, not a problem whatsoever. Everything is within decency and order. Let's continue to see what he says about the second temple dispensation, shall we? Listen closely and tell me if you've heard what he's saying before. Quote, Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Joshua into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers, until the days of David, who found favor before my God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as says the prophet, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? What? That was a question. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Who has received the law by the dis disposition of angels and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart 
and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Example, bingo! So as you can plainly hear, when Stephen started their dispensation off by quoting the prophecy attesting to the temple not sanctioned by my God, they killed him to keep the secret with them. Bottom line. But wait! For that was only the tricky part. For my big fig Newton, let's expose a huge tribal edition. But to do it, I must first ignorantly talk about myself for just a minute. See, I used to write movies to the point of being offered a job. I had to turn it down because they wanted me to write ultra horror. And you know I ain't going out like that. One of my advantages is that I can write entire movies plus production within the script by myself. Where the sorry movies you guys pay to see are written by two, three, or sometimes a team of writers on top of production support. I said all of this to say, when there are more than one person writing in a script, book, etc., more times than most, the two different halves do not seamlessly go together, and a bridging scene of dialogue is needed to make the two halves make sense. Well, my God has shown me a major bridging scene of dialogue in regards to the second temple that changes the context of the entire story completely. Let me explain by asking you gentle New Testament reading strangers a question. Other than the actual crucifixion scene, what is the storyline that grips you the most about the anointed one? Who said that? Who said it? Money, 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 money. Money. Hey, little Miss Ivy. The violence when it is said he was turning over the money changers tables and kicking down temple doors. Why is this scene important, you ponder? Because the scribe's pen was at work in this scene. You know, calling it his father's house. How do I know this, you wonder? Simple, because it's the only dialogue in the entire Bible, New Testament and the dreaded Maccabees, that links my God to the temple. And to prove this monumental fact, when you read, when you actually read the Gospels with wisdom, understanding, and within a storyline context, get this now, don't miss it. Not only did the anointed one diss the temple, he only visited there twice in his lifetime, and once was for the sham trial. What? Mmm, so you think I'm deceived to believe? Question, gentle strangers. When you read Matthew chapter 24, 1 through 2 in the KJV, what do you perceive? Quote, and the anointed one went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, personal quote, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Example, bingo. Mind you now, mind you now, according to the storyline, timeline, and context, he whipped ass going in the temple, exposed them not to be Jews, and called them the children of the devil, etc., inside the temple, treasury to be exact. And now we see, not only did he call what we have been deceived to believe and perceive was his father's house, to the point he whipped ass over it, to now simply calling it, personal quote, these things. And by it saying, quote, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and considering his age and the fact that you can't show me something that I already seen before, that can only mean whether it was Harris additions or not. If your homeboys know enough about the additions to show you around, 
To me, that can only mean this was his first time at the temple. And before you turn to the other gospel renditions of this story to call me a liar, let me say, let me show y'all first. Let me tell you what it says. One rendition says he taught in the temple daily. Not another used the prophecy about a temple for all nations. Uh-uh. Not at this time. Not. And John is totally different altogether. I ain't even going into that. So I guess my question is, what rendition do you perceive is true? Mine mailed me. My mind is always open. I don't know about the light being on though all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, little sisters and brothers. Endure. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Please keep this to yourselves. When you're in the heat of battle, I done been there. I done told you all my story. I, I was there. I shouldn't even probably be here today all beat up and stuff if it wasn't for my God doing some movie movie magic for me uh, to get me out of there. But um, when you're in the heat of battle and you're going to you're going to try to be right. And as you can see, dealing with this temple, exposing people who want something and you not only not only are you saying, nah, I'm not down with it. That's one thing. But you prove it. That's something totally different. And they're going to have the power. Look at this stuff through the scripture. They're going they come in force, people, you know, so we got to be wise. Understand what's going on, see it, but shh, you know, be quiet, shut your mouth. You ain't got to be right all the time, or let people know that you're right all the time. Let me back that out. I rewind. You ain't got to show people that you're right all the time. You know, you try to be right, but you ain't got to show them that. Just dummy up. I dummy up all day long on my jobs, and I dummy up all day long. Can't say nothing. You know, I listen to this crazy stuff all the time and I know as soon as I open my mouth, I know it's going to come out of my mouth and they're going to be heard about it. And then what, what I got? I got uh, a bad interpersonal relationships on my job. This, that, and other. So be mindful of what you're doing. Be mindful of what you're saying. Who you're talking to. For me, keep this to yourself. Ask my God about it. <laughs> most, most definitely. Please ask my God, am I right? Now, if he tells you, no, nah, don't listen to this cat, please come back and tell me. <laughs> come back and tell me. Now, he's going to tell you why I ain't right, and you tell me then why I'm not right. Now, mind you, I don't mind you, you, you know, you, you getting my mind right. But be right, because I'm going to test your spirit. Bet that. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, Endure.